Okay, so in this video, we're going to go through the placement of, uh, or really the overview first, of the roundabout civil cells and GDOT's civil cell library. Uh, th these are modular component based, so you've got a couple of rotaries, one placed on alignment, one placed on shape. We've got uh, a few different type of approaches, a deflection left, uh, approach basic. We've got a deflection left ramp. And then a uh, deflection right ramp there as well. All right, and then we also have, you know, basically median treatment: uh, splitter median, splitter island, splitter island with curved cut ramp, splitter median with curved cut ramp. And then we also have a bypass lane civil so we'll cell there as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and place this. We'll just place this approach. I mean, this rotary placed on alignments first. Alright, and then the primary alignment, uh, we'll say that's at east to west, and then the north to south is our secondary. And that geometry looks good, so I'll reset and accept that cell. Alright, as far as edits here, uh, horizontal, that radius control, and that's what it's called, radius control. So that's controlling your your um, inside edge of pavement. So I'm going to just cut the construction class off. So inside edge, outside edge, and then you've got a truck apron edge there. So if you want to change this radius, you can sit there and change that. I'm going to just change it to 90 feet. All right, and then if I wanted to change like that outside edge of pavement, I'd want to select it here. All right, and then you're going to come in and, and you want to grab this, this offset over here. And uh, I'm going to change that to uh, negative 28. And then for that, that uh, truck apron there, Change that to 12 from 12 to 14 feet. And basically, what we're doing vertically, we're actually profiling this uh, outside edge of pavement. We're actually profiling that. And then we're just projecting the slope. So if I go choose this inside edge of pavement, look at properties, you'll see a uh, profile 2% slope there. And then I think a 3% on the truck apron there. So basically what we're doing, profile outside edge, 2% up to the inside edge, 3% up to the uh, shoulder, I mean to the uh, truck apron. And then if we kind of come in and look at uh, point or corridor objects, we look at point controls here. You can see basically we've got a template that's targeting both of those. In other words, we're we're dropping the template. I'm really not even sure where we drop. So where are we dropping it? We're dropping it on the uh, take a look at it. We're actually dropping it on the outside edge, and then uh, two percent up, and then three percent up there. Now you can change that. You know, I think a lot of times. It, Alignment shown on this this uh, inside inside edge right here. So you could reprofile this like that and project your slope out and change your template drop to where it's dropped here. You know, so you've got the ability to do that. All right, so that's a quick overview of the rotary. Now we'll kind of move on to your uh, approaches next. Okay, so I'm gonna go cut construction class off and we'll go place a uh, couple approach cells. So. A civil cell. And we'll choose that. Uh, we'll just choose the, the basic approach here initially. And then we'll just place an approach down here on this. So roundabout outside edge of pavement. 
run by inside edge of pavement. You probably want to zoom in and just make sure you're getting that instead of your, you know, you're getting edge pavement instead of that uh, curve back there. So I'm going to choose that. It's inside edge, approach alignment. And then really it wants, it's asking for uh, roundabout outside edge of pavement, data point at the roundabout outside edge of pavement, approach alignment intersection. So that's right here. I'm not sure why AccuSnap's not working there on that, but I can go here and then hover over and data point for that outside. And then there. And then really we just need the last one, data point along approach alignment. This is a length control, a minimum of 100 feet from roundabout outside edge pavement. So we just back up here and maybe go right, right there. As long as it's 100 feet, should be good. The geometry looks good, so I'll reset and accept this sale. So there's that uh, approach, and we'll come back. We'll look at horizontal edits in just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and place uh, approach to flex and left on this other quadrant. And the prompt's really quite honestly going to be the exact same what we use for the basic T. So outside edge of pavement, inside edge of pavement, approach alignment, and then this data point snap, intersection there, intersection there, and then a length control. So minimum of 100 feet, so I'll back up, data point right there. Well, that geometry does not look real good, so we want to definitely, the uh, direction of arrow needs to be away from the roundabout. And then that, that geometry looks good, so we'll go ahead and reset and accept that cell. Okay, so there's that approach there. Now, like I said, next we're going to go over uh, uh, the horizontal edits on these two approaches. Okay, so as far as edits, uh, basically these median edges you see here, these actually control, in other words. So, so if I were to change, um, you know, this radius here, uh, maybe that, that 50 foot radius, and basically it's on the basic, it's a two center curve. So 500 foot radius and then a uh, 50 foot radius here but if I wanted to come in and change that to 65 if you'll watch that outside edge of payments so 65 that outside edge of payments going to go with uh, that median edge of pavement edit there and the way it's doing it is this this element here so it's set up initially 18 feet uh, but if you will look at this so right here, see that snap there. So, so you're going to be getting oddball radius values out here, and and that's why. I mean, at any time you can change that radius, but one, just know once you do that, you you look you lose that snap there. So initially, the setup is um, it, you know median edge controls there. Um, obviously you could change whatever you need to about that, you know, this, this curve, it's a two center, but if you wanted to, um, you know, so if you wanted to take that, 
flat curve out, you could do that. Or if you wanted to add a back transition, you could do that. So you could uh, either either one there. Um, as far as the this median width here, so initially we we've, we've got just a one foot segment there. So if I wanted to just squeeze that down to zero, or maybe no just no median on this on this side here, you got the you know the ability to do that. Um, I actually think I'm going to flatten this out uh, add a little bit 75 feet on this and another thing you can do so if you look at these on both sides initially you see this snap right here so we're basically just we have a a tangent element here so I can actually grab that and it, you know if I wanted to flatten this this side over here this exit side a little bit so you can move that uh, that tangent similar to what I'm doing here I was trying to snap I may want to turn off for package snap but you can see how that can be controlled like that um, so you've got the ability to, to do that as, as well. Um, as far as vertical on this particular particular cell, um, this thing's pretty much 2% out on on this element here. So if we look at that, negative 2%. And then if we look at uh, the side over here, has the same thing. So that interval there negative two percent and then basically this uh, these edge of pavements here are just profiled off of the, that surface here and actually this surface up here too so we actually have a a terrain model it's kind of tough to see right in this area but it's actually a terrain model right there you can kind of see that outline it goes all the way around there. And that's really how those median edges are profiled. And quite honestly, those median edges are uh, used to place either a splitter island or splitter medium width, and, which we'll, we'll be doing that shortly. All right, so that's kind of your basic T uh, edits there. Okay, so we're going to go through edits on the uh, deflection uh, left approach next. Uh, the primary one, the first element I actually built in the cell was this, this element here. Um, and that was actually placed, you know, the last reference was a data point for a length control. So, you know, you can, you can scoot that as needed. Um, you know, it's got to be long enough to basically fit this, this curve here. So you can see I've got about 90 feet. You can see it's about a 400 foot radius there. So. Um, you know, if your data point wasn't far, far enough back, uh, that, that radius wouldn't, you know, might not fit on that. So lengthening that basically allows that, that radius right there to fit. All right. So the next element created is this element here, which is really controlling your, your, uh, this right median edge of pavement here, uh, all set from the center line there. So I'm going to actually come in and change that to four feet I think initially we've got a six foot median there and I'm gonna make it make it eight feet so I don't know if we can see this in 3d view all right so so I edited that to control that right edge so to control the left edge I'm gonna go grab this interval right here and I'm gonna change that to negative eight Alright, and then as far as this, uh, and basically the right edge is kind of controlling that left, right? So that right there is just an offset of that right edge. Um, looking at this this curve here, initially 
when we place that, it's the the radius is determined by the sna it's snap right here. I'm actually going to change this just kind of right out of the box. I'm not too concerned about that snap. That's just there for an initial placement. I'm going to make this like a 300 foot radius. Okay, and then um, radius there is another value you can change, right? I think I'm going to leave it what like it is. Uh, another thing you can also do, you see this, this tangent line to that, it's a line tangent from that inside edge of pavement. You got one on this side as well. This one here, you'll notice it's got a snap where well, you can actually come in here if you want to come in and change that, that uh where that tangent line takes off, come in here and modify it. I'm just keep in 65 there. All right, so that'll give you a little better angle on your exit there, kind of flatten that out. And quite honestly, you could just grab grab that element there and just grab that point and move it. Uh, but it gives you a little kind of a unique way to kind of move that in and out. Uh, you can also do this size a little bit different. We're, we anchored it to the intersection, but you can grab that and move that. Similar to what we showed you on the basic T. Okay, so these these outside edge of pavements are, are actually controlled, or at least the radius value here is controlled with that snap there to this element here. Right. Same thing on the side there. But what, what I'm going to actually do is, before I make make uh, any edits, I'm going to actually make this a two-lane width. I'm going to increase the width, but before I do that, I'm going to come in and uh, adjust this offset right here. So instead of negative 12, I'm going to make that negative 24. So I'll say a two-lane approach. It'd be, yeah. Two lanes each way. Uh, then I'm going to come in and actually change this width here to 24. Okay. And now I'm going to come in and change that width to 28. And also change this width here to 28. Like I said, you know, watch when I make that edit. It's going to push that, that outside shoulder out. Or outside edge of pavement out. All right, so as far as horizontal edits, I, I believe that's pretty much it. You know, it's... Uh, just remember this this right side is controlling that, that left side and, and uh, you know the medium widths you got several intervals in there that you can select to uh, to do various things in the cell. There's another one there, right? Another one. Ooh, not there, but there. That's pretty much it for horizontal edits. Okay, so talking about vertical here. If we'll take a look at this element here, scroll down, it says projected negative 2%. That's coming off of the uh, approach alignment there. And then we can look at this, and that's the uh, same thing, 2% off the approach alignment. And uh, basically what we're doing from that, I had to cut construction class on. There's an element under these median edge of pavements that you see at DNC median left. I'm going to open up the profile view of it. You can see that element goes from. So it goes from edge of pavement, and it really is just a partial offset on that median edge. It goes all the way, but it starts at that. Uh, that outside edge of pavement there. Basically, that's just the intersection point. So the active profile there is this one right here initially. 
that right there is just a 2%, positive 2% projection off of that. So basically what we're doing, we're going from the median edge with a straight line that comes in right here. Really, you get 2% back at this point there. I mean, it's something you may want to change. Uh, you may want to come in and do a offset partial along that 2%, so where you tie the positive 2% maybe back up in here. So you do a partial offset, maybe to back there, and then straight line down to there. Uh, and basically, we're doing the same thing on this other edge. So if we'll right click, there's that DNC. All right, so that point is that edge there. So you, that point, that's what that is. And then we're just, this is a positive 2% off that outside edge of payment. And we're really just, like I said, placing a line from there to the end of that. So not really getting a positive 2% to back here. That's where you might want to come back in, do a partial offset. So you maybe get to positive 2% up in here. All right. Right. And it, ultimately what we're actually doing there is, if we look at these, uh, these uh, terrains here, we've got a, a surface terrain that goes right there. And then we've also got another terrain, that terrain for profiling islands. Right there, you can see the limits of it. And that's ultimately how we're actually Profiling that element and that element there. All right, so that's pretty much it, vertical. Um, you know, I didn't mention this on the basic T, but you know, if you if you ever wanted to, if you ever had uh, this uh, the need for a overlaying some overlay and widening in here, you could actually just delete. That surface template, and I might want to actually do it. But once you delete it, you know, I have an open area here. And then basically, what I would do would be pretty similar to what we do with the overlay and widening. We would actually place um, a, a template along this in, outside edge here, and it would target an element. So I also built a build a complex that went from here to there to there. So one continuous element there. And then we basically would place an overlay and widen template on this outside edge of pavement at a point control to target that complex following that center line and then this edge of pavement there. So if you, if you had a need for overlay and widen in this area, that's basically what, what I would do to, to do that. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as overview of the approaches. We do have a, a couple of uh, ramps but I don't think I'm going to go through those in this particular uh, example here. The edits are some similarities between those and, and these here. Okay, so I don't believe I'm going to place all the uh, approaches, um, but we'll kind of pretend I did. I may come back later and actually add an approach here and place a bypass lane, but, you know, what you can do now between these two uh approaches here is we come in and just add a linear template uh, to this area here uh, to finish the model in there. So I'm going to just do that just real quick. And I think the next thing we're going to actually do after that is come in and place some uh, some of the islands or the median treatment cells. So, and then we'll follow that up with a bypass lane at the very end. Alright, so I'm going to come in and choose. That's actually the linear template I'm going to choose there. I think everything else looks good. We're not going to do lock to start. I'm going to place a linear template. That outside edge of pavement. Confirm the template. Then basically I'm going to just come in and snap. Do a key point snap. And snap to this point here. As the beginning. And that as the end. Just confirm the rest of the prompts. You can see we finished that, that model in there. I mean, you could actually put the in condition, the sidewalk in conditions on this rotary. But, I, you know, I think it's better practice to come in and just leave that off and then just come in and fill the gaps like we did there. Okay, so we're going to go through the uh, 
placement of the splitter median and island cells next. And then just looking at the cells that, that in GDOT's uh, roundabout category, you got a splitter island, a splitter median, and then you got the same with uh, of both of those with curved cut ramps there. Right, so we're going to place the splitter island. And we'll just place it down here on this basic approach. So locate the uh, left median edge of pavement, so we're, we're going to come in and choose this. Locate the right median edge of pavement, we'll choose that. Uh, locate the seam line or match line at the roundabout outside edge of pavement, that's that GML feature there. Or that geometry does not look good, so just looking at the uh, direction of these. Uh, References that needs to be away, and this one needs to be uh, left to right there. That looks better, so we'll reset. Uh, we can't clip that surface template, so we'll reset and accept this cell. Okay, as far as edits, I'll just turn off construction class. And as far as edits, we're just you know, real similar to your T intersection cells. So you can come in here and um, modify those. I want to make that negative three. All right. You can do that. You can actually even step this out. So if I want to make that 12. And then come over here and make this side uh, 12. You can actually step that out into your your rotary or out there. So if you were you know if you were losing a losing a lane through here, right? So if you were two lane roundabout and you're losing one lane here, you could step it out just like I did there. So I'm gonna actually move this back. To negative three. Move this back to negative one. All right, and then you know, change the radius values there as well. So just change that to two feet. Okay, so as far as vertical, these are just like the island cells. These are just projected slopes initially here. It actually looks like it's riding pretty good uh, on that terrain, but we'll go ahead and just, just reprofile this. So I'll go to geometry. We'll just open a new window and open profile model. All right, and then... Um, Let's go to the profile by surface command. And we'll choose that element. Reset. And then the reference surface. Um, I'm going to come in and just use this, choose this uh, terrain. I'll have to reset a few times to get to it. Four profiling islands. So we'll reset and then just go through all the prompts. And actually, it was following it pretty good. You can see it's a little bit off, so we'll just make that new profile active there to get it set exactly on that model. Really, the last step would be to come in and just add a uh, I add a add features, add a void, locate the terrain that's going to be that pavement surface terrain. The element to add would be not the cell, but the edge of pavement reset and confirm void to. 
to a better area out there. Okay, so now we'll come in and we'll actually place the uh, the median cell. So we've just got an open-ended median here that just keeps on going there. So no, not an island. So we'll go place civil cell. And if you'll notice also, I'm going to place the median that has a curb cut ramp. I've already placed a, uh, just came in here and manually placed a, a line from left to right uh, that represents where I want a curb cut ramp. Right, so we'll come in here and uh, choose the left median edge of pavement, the right median edge of pavement, the seam line, which I might turn the construction class on to grab that, and then the curb cut ramp center line there. All right, and then we'll uh, jump to this good, so we'll reset and accept that sale. All right. Okay, so we'll come and kind of look and see that curb cut around there. And as far as edits, we're going to, edits are going to be fairly fairly similar. This one, the cell is a little bit different in the fact that we don't we put that uh, on the island down here. We initially one foot offset there. That's not done on this cell, so it's a, maybe a little more difficult to come in and uh, if you wanted to add an offset here. So. What you would need to do really is just come in and choose the, uh, these two fillets here. And uh, you can see that just goes to right here. But so if we wanted to make that uh, one foot offset, and what's kind of tough is kind of figuring out which, which, which is the back offset, which is the right. So I may go back and actually make those. I uh, want to just add an offset. But. We'll see. So, but if I came in and made this negative one, one foot, see that all. Well, you can see I've got an offset there now. Another one went and chose the the other fillet here, and uh, see that's why I just don't know which ones, which ones back, which ones ahead. Which do I go left or go right? Right, so I went. That was the correct one. I just went the wrong way there, so I'm gonna make that negative one. So not too terribly bad, but it is a little more difficult. And I think probably better if we put them up, put the offset initially in there. But you can kind of see how that works. Then we really want to go apply the vertical like we did on on this other one there. All right, so that's that's pretty much the uh, the splitter, you know, decent overview of the splitter cells. So. Okay, so the last cell we're going to place is is the bypass lane cell, and I went in, went ahead and just added a uh, off off the recording. I added another approach here, and basically just to uh, prepare for placement of this, it's best to come in and place a simple arc between that tangent there and then this tangent here in this particular case. So not not the curve, we're choosing those uh, turn this radius off also. So so basically what you're doing you're seeing about where you want this this edge of pavement for the bypass lane to to be. So I'm gonna say about right there. And then basically, I'll just come in and place a data, place a uh, a point here, just to give me something to look at. And I'll just get rid of this this element here. All right, and then we're gonna come in and go place a cell now. So 
the reason you need that point, we're controlling that radius uh, with the data point. Right, so we'll go choose the bypass lane. And you can see the refs here. The, there's actually a simple element here, that tangent. And then the complex, which is the curve and the, the interval back there. On the left side, you got the same thing on the right side. You got the roundabout edge of pavement, and you also have a data point, which is the last rep to control that radius. So, all right, so let's just kind of go through these prompts. So left edge of left approach edge of pavement, not complex. That's going to be that tangent. Right approach edge of pavement, not complex. It's going to be this tangent, and that, that's really not a tangent, but that's that's the uh, you know the element that curve is tied to there. Right, so the left approach uh, EP complex, so what that is talking about your complex element, and then the right approach complex element, and then your roundabout outside edge of pavement, and then basically a data point, and really I'm not going to snap, I'm going to just get close to this point here. And you could snap and, and move, move that point if you wanted to, uh, but I'd I think I'd rather just change the radius. I'm going to data point about right here. And then the direction of the arrows on the references. What we'll go through next. But that's away. Away. So I'm having to change some of these. So away. Away. And then I believe this one's... Uh, left to right there and the geometry looks good now so I, I think we'll go with that so we'll reset and accept the sale Okay, so you can actually see the uh, see this uh, bypass line. We'll, we'll go through the uh, horizontal edits and the cleanup next. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and clean up the sidewall, curb and gutter, and end conditions in that area and this area there. I'm gonna actually do that with a template display rule. So we'll need to turn on construction class and choose that. And then we'll add that intersection left uh, parametric constraint. So we just got to move that point negative one feet or ten feet. Really doesn't matter what how much distance. And then we're going to go from there. And I'll turn off construction class. I'm just going to zoom in and we'll select the point there as the end. Okay. And then we got to do the same thing up here. So construction class back on. And then we'll add so from the beginning. Now we've got a pretty good looking uh, bypass lane there now. So as far as horizontal edits, uh, this element here, you can obviously change that radius. You know, that, that data point controlled it. So changing the radius will move it off that point, which is fine. Uh, you just got to stay within these, you know, limits of these elements is tied to. Um, can come in and also change this this width of this element here, which I can grab at the interval. And so if I want to make that's initially 12 feet, if I want to make that like 16 feet. Let's 
Oh, let me move that island around like that. And then you can also, another thing you can do with this, this, uh, that art there, if we go to properties, you could give this a, um, so if we go to the fillet rule, you could actually give this a back or a head offset. So if we wanted to move that 12 feet off on that side, I may be going the wrong way. I don't know. We'll see what it does. Uh, so if you wanted to actually make room for a turn lane there, or you can do the same thing with the head offset there as well. But you, you know, you should have a little feel of how that works. As far as vertically on this sail, if you look at that element there, negative two percent. This element there, uh, negative two percent. So really, everything's just two percent off of that uh, that edge going through there. All right, so that's uh, the basic overview of the uh, roundabout uh, civil sails there.